Well, Fresh Baked, you've kind of caught me off guard here. Disney has caught me off guard. I, a whole bunch of news, uh, news is broken in the last couple of days, all while I've been at Universal Studios in Florida, and then just recently today while on a bus driving from Universal Studios to the uh, Walt Disney World Resort, just finished having dinner at Animal Kingdom uh, at, at Boma. And uh, I've been chomping at the bit. Could not, <laughs> could not not talk about this stuff with you guys. This news that's broke. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep my voice down as I'm out here on the patio. If you happen to see oh, on, our, on our balcony, right behind me is the uh, savanna, the Animal Kingdom savanna. If you happen to see a giraffe or a zebra, let me know and give me a shout out. And we'll, I'm just kidding. I don't think they roam around at night. But anyway, let's get into some of these uh, news stories that I've just have been dying to talk to you guys about it. We're going to start with the biggest news story as far as we're concerned, as far as Fresh Baked and Disneyland is concerned. They have, or they're going to, as of, was it February 4th? On February 4th, I've got my notes here. On February 4th, park hopping will be no longer at 1 p.m. Park hopping will be at 11 a.m. Now, this is big, big news, and not just because of the convenience factor. 1 p.m. is very late. A lot of people felt like that was too late. People were complaining about that, the 1 p.m. thing. 11 a.m. is very fair. It's very, very fair. So you can it it, it allows you to book a DCA start, uh, but still get a, a very reasonable amount of time in at Disneyland as opposed to 1 p.m., which obviously is two hours less. And it's actually you know at a time of day when things are at a, at its peak. It's the busiest time of day, so it's not exactly the best time to be parking park hopping over to Disneyland. So that's that's great. But what for me, the the bigger story here is that if we're talking about momentum going in either direction in terms of reservations. Uh, I feel like this is, I mean, if it's any direction, it's towards getting rid of reservations. The closer you get to zero, when you talk about park hop time, the closer you get to, you know, 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. or, you know, whatever the opening day time is, the closer you get to that, the closer you get to the reservation system ending. Reservations and a time frame for park hopping go hand in hand. If you have a reservation system, you have to have a park hopper time. If you have no reservation system, you don't need a time to do park hopping. So that is a sign. The 11 a.m. change is a sign that they are drifting away from possibly the reservation system. I don't want to get you know my hopes up too much, but that's good news. There's more good news coming out of Disney World as far as that goes, but stay tuned. We're going to get to the Disney World news here in a minute. Let's get to our next Disneyland story. Magic Keys. Now they didn't give any dates, but Disney has said that they will be they will be selling Magic Keys again at some point throughout the year, intermittently, off and on. And this is something that I had actually uh, guessed when they when they opened them up for a day a while back. I felt like okay, that they've 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 set a precedent now because you want to be able to meet those financial targets each time that that time period comes along each quarter. I felt like it was an attempt when they did it in the last quarter to sort of boost up revenue uh, for that time period when, for the time period when people normally would have been buying passes or renewing them. Uh, so I feel like each quarter we might see them do this. So I'm guessing four times a year, maybe more, who knows, but that would be my guess. And there's actually a, uh, a, a new uh, reporting quarter coming up in February. So it could be as soon as that. Stay tuned, pay attention. Watch the news, watch Fresh Bake to find out when you might get your next opportunity to purchase a Magic Key. Uh, they, they haven't said any dates as of yet, but they are going to be happening intermittently as inventory becomes available. Of course, they don't have to go out there and make a Magic Key. There's no construction, there's no materials needed. They can do this anytime they want. So when they talk about inventory, it's when they feel like doing it. <laughs> okay, that's all that is. It's, it, inventory means when do we need to make some money? So that's great news for people who are have been holding out. It's great news for people like me who have, who have been become, I don't know, less optimistic, more skeptical about the the future of Magic Keys. This is a again, it's a trend in the correct direction as far as I'm concerned. It's, as far as people are concerned uh, in Southern California, people who want to buy a Magic Key. Good news for you guys. By the way, I apologize also for the non-standard grip that we have in this camera. I'm actually having to do this standing up while holding fancy cam <laughs> in order to get this thing to work. And there's no place for me to set up a camera out here, you know, and sit in a fixed position. So I apologize. Uh, you know, bear with me guys. I'm doing this on the fly. But like I said, I, I wanted to get this out to you so bad. Okay, uh, next. 
Uh, they are going to allow, this is really good news for uh, people who are buying single day tickets. They're adding more inventory for the tier zero tickets, single day tickets, tier zero, the ticket that costs $104. They're pretty rare and they're at the, you know, the worst times of the year, obviously. In terms of the you know, times that you want to go to Disneyland. They have, they have now committed uh, two months worth of dates that will be tier zero, $104. That per park, that is, uh, that is a, that, that's a great that is great news uh, for those of you who who are lamenting the fact that some of these tickets, you know, if you want to go to Disneyland, what was it I paid? Well, I didn't pay, but the ticket that I used, the park hopper, in December was two hundred and forty four dollars. So one hundred four dollars is, you know, that's that's affordable. It's a one one day one park ticket, but still. Um, $104, two months worth of those tickets. So that's great news that they're they're giving us more opportunity for that. And then finally, uh, they have said that they're not giving away ride photos. <laughs> those used to have, you have to used to have a uh, photo pass. If you wanted to get one of your ride photos, you're on Splash Mountain, you put your hands up or whatever. Um, what was the other one? Um, what other attractions have ride photos now that I think about it? That's the only one at Disneyland, isn't it? What attractions have ride photos? Here I am blanking on this. Splash Mountain was the only one that came to mind. Anyway, those are free. Now, if you bought a ticket, you can get your ride photos for free. That's, that has never been a thing. Okay, so that's, that's great news. Um, that, that is really good news for people who like to get those ride photos. Don't have to worry about it. Don't have that photo pass. Everybody who has a paid ticket can get one. Okay, I mentioned Walt Disney World, and there's some very big news that is great news, very encouraging news for annual pass holders. I think it's in starting April, oh no, they didn't give a date. It's probably in February also, I'm guessing. You don't need a reservation at all, annual pass holders, don't need a reservation if you come to the park after 2 p.m. Oh my God, this, can you imagine a rule like that here at Disneyland where people, I mean, so many APs come after two o'clock. It would be like as if there was no reservation system. That, now this is Disney World, mind you, not Disneyland, this is Disney World. After 2 p.m., annual pass holders can just show up. Um, it's not a big a deal, annual passes in, in, in Walt Disney World, so it's not, it, you know, in terms of the, the predominance of guests here at Disney World, I'm actually here right now as we speak. Can you believe it, guys? I'm at Disney World right now. I'm at Animal Kingdom. There's a giraffe sleeping in my backyard. Uh, it's not, you know, the predominance of guests here are single-day, multi-day ticket holders. So, uh, it's it's a good, it's a, it's a it's a trend. It's it's in the right direction. Uh, I, I believe already in February, I think they're starting to the thing uh, where uh, single-day tickets don't have to have reservations at all. Period. So the only reservations that'll be needed in the near future at Disney World are before annual pass holders who show up before or who want to show up before 2 p.m. Stay tuned. This is the kind of information this is the kind of news that I've really been waiting to hear uh, it's positive in the right direction it's positive for annual pass holders it's positive it's, it's a guest friendly move that's what I'm looking for it's just things in general that are guest friendly uh, while we're talking about Walt Disney World a couple of the things that that came in the news that, that you might be interested in I know some of you are bi-coastal when it comes to visiting parks harmonious is ending on April 2nd that I don't think is news, but the news that <laughs> the really good news is that they they said verbally Disney did that they are going to be removing the harmonious barges. Now, those I, what I know about harmonious is just how much complaining that was done about those barges. They're such an eyesore during the day. At night, the show's beautiful. I've I've heard of harmonious is, is a wonderful show at night. We're gonna get a chance to see it while we're here at Epcot this week, uh, so I'm looking forward to that. But uh, good news for those of you who who uh, load the idea of those tacos sitting out there in the middle of the uh, Epcot Lagoon, you know, they're going to they're gonna be getting rid of those barges uh, very soon. And then finally, let's go to downtown Disney, back at Disneyland, where they're just, this was yesterday, a wealth of, of information, a wealth of news was provided by Disney. So we'll start with La Brea. La Brea Bakery just decided, you know what, we don't want to be in the restaurant business anymore. <laughs> they just quit. They're not closing the La Brea Bakery at D downtown Disney. La Brea Bakery as a business is going out of business. They are exiting, to quote Disney, they are exiting the restaurant business. Now, I kind of feel like this has been, 
I've always felt like, I've always believed that Portos was going to land at La Brea. I've always felt like La Brea was not long for downtown Disney before we even heard this news that they were going to be closing. I had always felt like it was a natural fit for Portos to wind up at that site. And that has been confirmed. They will be building a Portos, but they, they, they won't be taking over the La Brea Bakery building. They will be, it sounds like, according to the update from Disney, uh, that, 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 that there's going to be a new building built, quote unquote, in the footprint of La Brea Bakery. So they're going to build something brand new there for, for Portos. Before that happens, though, Earl of Sandwich is going to be there temporarily. Now, we heard, we knew that Earl of Sandwich was coming back to downtown Disney and what the timeline was. We weren't sure. We've been speculating about where they were going to put that. Earl of Sandwich will be occupying in February. They're going to take over the La Brea building uh, as of February. And, uh, and they're also going to be, this is so strange. I don't feel like that Disney wants to be in the affordable food market anymore uh, at downtown Disney because, well, you know, Earl's was affordable. The sandwiches are affordable, but they're adding something called the, the Earl of Sandwich Tavern, which is going to be table service dining, in addition to the sandwiches that you can get there that, that, that we're accustomed to at Earl's Sandwich. Add that to the fact that Catal and Uva Bar are getting an upgrade. They're going to become, you know, upscale Mexican dining. And then you've got uh, Din Tai Fung coming, which is, you know... I, I guess it's upscale, right? It's, you know, that, that's not, it's not bargain food anyway. So they're raising the level, they're raising the bar at Downtown Disney. Uh, now, speaking of Den Tai Fung, they provided some new concept art of the interiors, and they also said in that update that they are going to be building Den Tai Fung in the western end of Downtown Disney District, of the, of the property. That suggests to me the vacant lot that's under construction right now, as opposed to uh, Tortilla Joe's, which is what we thought was, that's the rumor that we were hearing. But I wouldn't describe Tortilla Joe's as being on the west end. It's in the middle of downtown Disney. Not, it's not on either end. So, so my guess is Din Tai Fung is going to be in that vacant lot right now. And what that means for Tortilla Joe's, I don't know. I still don't believe that there's a home, that there's a place for Tortilla Joe's at Disneyland or at this downtown Disney, being that, you know, the conversion that's happening with Uva and, and Catal. I can't imagine there being, you know, two Mexican restaurants sitting catty corny from one another. Also, by the way, the tone that was used when describing Din Tai Fung is that it's, we're not close. It's going to be a while before we see Din Tai Fung at downtown Disney. And that actually covers all the news. I can't believe I got it through, I got through that as quickly as I did. Again, I apologize for the crudity of this video and the ad hoc nature of it. I'm completely winging this, but as I said, you know, I've been... I've been going a mile a minute since, uh, what's it been? Has it been three days now? I don't know. Yeah, three days now that we've been away from home. We got up at four in the morning. Um, stay tuned for the Fresh Bake. First thing we got coming up is, after this video, is a State of Design report that I've been working on for days. It's been hard getting stuff done. And then we've got our Travel Day video coming up. And then we've already shot a video for uh, uh, Universal Studios Florida, which, by the way, spoiler alert, I loved Universal Studios Florida. I was so impressed. I cannot wait to get, I cannot wait to show you, well, to show you my enthusiasm for how much we loved Universal Studios Florida. And I can't wait to see what happens here at uh, Walt Disney World here this week because I am, I'm over the moon excited and happy to be here. This, I mean, we've been in here at the Animal Kingdom for a couple hours now. Uh, just rolled in, I think like two or three hours ago. And already, I'm so impressed with this hotel, and I'm so impressed with everything. I can't wait to show you guys this stuff, but uh, that's it for now. Stay tuned to Fresh Baked. More coming your way. I love you guys. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. Fresh Baked.